Recap in minutes, in today's video, we will be enjoying a war action film, entitled Sahara. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with an ongoing war zone of rockets and mortar attacks. Private Waco Hoyt and Master Sergeant Joe Gunn run through the attacks, carrying gallons of water to their tank. After some miscommunication with headquarters, Private Jimmy Doyle yells to Joe about their change of course. With plans of heading south, Joe urgently tries to fix their tank Lulu Bell. After much struggle, the armored car comes to life, injuring Waco, who was outside the tank. On their journey, they pass a damaged medic camp. Joe comes out and meets Halliday, a medic captain who offers assistance to Waco's wounds. Joe meets LaRue, a French soldier among Halliday's men, and offers him a cigarette. He looks around the camp, and sees the heavy damage of the place. He tells Halliday about the retreat order from the general, and suggests that they move south. Halliday and his men laugh, telling Joe that the south is the worst piece of land in the entire desert. But Joe remains stern, and tells them about the Germans' growing power over the desert. In response, they scoff and insult Lulu Bell. Joe tenses up and quickly defends his beloved tank, telling them that it's their only escape from the Nazis. Prideful, Halliday tells Joe that he isn't planning to retreat. He points out that he and his crew are far more experienced than Joe, when living in the desert. Joe becomes irritated at Halliday's stubbornness, and reiterates his suggestion of moving south. Joe eventually gives them an ultimatum, either join him and move south, or stay in place and get killed by the Germans. LaRue decides to go with Joe, followed by Halliday and his men. Along the way, they meet Tambul, a sergeant major, and his Italian prisoner, Giuseppe. Tambul tells them about the deaths of his men in battle, and the prisoner he captured. They ask him for directions to a well, and he gladly agrees to lead them. As the soldiers climb back to the tank, Joe doesn't let the prisoner go with them. Joe gives him rations and water, but the prisoner insists on joining them. Angry and frustrated, Joe forcefully pushes Giuseppe down to the ground. Halliday intervenes, and tells Joe about the cruelty of leaving a man stranded in the desert. Nevertheless, Joe doesn't change his decision, and yells at Halliday to climb up the tank. Halliday submits, shunning away the helpless prisoner. However, the prisoner doesn't give up. He runs after the tank. Surprised by Giuseppe's determination and perseverance, Joe and his men let him join them. After a futile first attempt at finding water, Joe asks Tambul where the nearest well is, but Tambul warns him, that it's 70 miles south named Bir Arcoma. While this troubles Halliday, Joe takes the risk. The team spots a Nazi aircraft in the distance. The soldiers quickly use the tank for cover. As the plane draws close, it rapidly fires at the tank. As Halliday asks why they haven't fired back, Joe patiently waits. When the plane comes nearer, Joe flies to action, and successfully shoots the aircraft. The group cheerfully commends Joe. As the plane comes crashing in the distance, they see a Nazi soldier parachuting down to the ground. In an instant, Joe and three other men, run to corner the enemy. The Nazi, Hans von Falcon, holds up a pistol to the four men surrounding him. After useless efforts to make Joe surrender, Hans throws away his gun. Joe orders Tambul to search the Nazi, but Hans refuses to be touched by Tambul. Halliday explains that Hans is racist, and thinks of Tambul to be of an inferior race. Nevertheless, Tambul roughly searches through Hans' clothes and pockets, finding a pocket knife, another gun, and a piece of propaganda paper. When Halliday and Joe read it, they discover that the Germans have already taken Brook. They return to the tank and find Mike Clarkson, one of Halliday's men, injured by the attack. Halliday quickly comes to his aid to stop the bleeding, while Joe gives LaRue the responsibility of watching over the Nazi. On their way to Bir Arcoma, they encounter a sandstorm. Still, Tambul leads them through it. When they reach the ruins, they take cover. Joe is told that Clarkson desperately needs water to live. Despite their urgent need for water, they impatiently wait for the storm to pass. When it does, the soldiers scramble around the ruins to look for the well, digging holes and burying sticks in the sand. As the sun's heat continues to beat down on the overly dehydrated soldiers, many of them are about to pass out. When it starts to look hopeless, Tambul discovers the well, and calls for the other soldiers to come. They rush to him with excitement as they desperately dig through the sand. True enough, there was a well, but it didn't have any water. Joe is frustrated, but tells Tambul to go down the well. Tambul agrees and climbs down. When he reaches the bottom, he sees nothing but sand. He vigorously looks around, 
and when it seems like there is nothing there, he sees a small crevice within the rocks. Inside, he sees a rock slowly dripping with water. Overjoyed, he shouts for buckets. In the far distance, Nazi soldiers are also looking for water. Their guide tells them about the nearest well in Bir Arkoma thus, the Nazis move immediately. Unaware of the incoming German soldiers, Joe and his men drink cheerfully, exchanging laughs and smiles. However, this is cut short when Clarkson dies. As a sign of respect, they create a small memorial for him outside the ruins. Halliday leads the burial with a prayer, as the soldiers remain quiet in salutation. As the Nazis continue to advance to Bir Arkoma, the soldiers in the ruins remain relaxed. However, the atmosphere suddenly turns serious, when LaRue expresses his hate towards the Nazis. He tells them about the brutal deaths of his family and friends, because of the Germans. In a far corner, Hans listens quietly. Suddenly, Casey yells out to the soldiers about an incoming Nazi vehicle. Joe orders the men to prepare their guns, and get ready for anything. As the soldiers prepare, the prisoners are put in a room inside the ruins. Giuseppe discovers that Hans knows how to speak English, when explaining an escape plan. The air becomes tense, as the Nazis get off the vehicle, and start moving toward the ruins. The silence stretches for minutes, until the Germans notice footprints in the sand. In an instant, a gunfight begins. Joe and his men release rapid fire to the Nazis, killing most of them. Eventually, they win and force the Germans to surrender. Joe and Halliday interrogate the Nazis into telling them where their camp is, by bribing them with water. When a soldier gives in, Joe and Halliday discover that they are an advanced scouting party from a nearby Nazi camp, that was also looking for water. After that, Joe is told that there is no more water in the well. Halliday pulls Joe aside to suggest that they should leave, and meet with a reconnaissance group. However, Joe says that they should stay and defend the well. Halliday protests, telling Joe that his job is to deliver his men safely across the desert, not waste their lives in an unexpected battle. Joe explains that they should stay, and defend the well to delay the Nazis. He thinks this will give their main camps more time to regroup, and win the war. Halliday still doesn't agree with the plan and questions Joe's leadership, whether he will force the soldiers to fight against their will or not. In response, Joe goes back to the group and explains his plan. Many of them disagree, believing that it's a lost cause. They point out that the Nazis outnumber them by hundreds. Joe acknowledges it but stays firm in his decision. Ultimately, they all decide to stay and fight alongside Joe, with a spirit of courage and brotherhood. In an attempt to trick the Nazis, they tell the scouts to tell their general that they have plenty of water, even when they don't. As the scouts leave, Hans tries to scream for help, but LaRue stops and holds him at knife point. Joe and his men prepare for the battle ahead. They litter the field with landmines, and prepare their guns, grenades, ammunition, and mines for what's about to happen. Joe teaches Halliday how to use a rifle. Halliday understands, but feels anxious. He admits that he has no war experience. He tells Joe that he's used to saving people, not killing them. Nevertheless, Joe wishes him luck and reminds him to stay calm. The soldiers move to their positions, as they wait for the Nazis. Surely enough, the Germans started marching towards them by hundreds. Joe and his men become intimidated, but remain calm and ready. The suspenseful atmosphere is interrupted by a landmine that explodes, killing some Nazi soldiers. Right after that, Lulu Bell joins the battle, killing many enemies. Amos start falling, while the Nazis advance. Joe and his men, systematic and focused, fight with all they've got. As more landmines blow up, the Nazis start to retreat, leaving the field littered with bloodied corpses. Joe's men take a breath of relief from the sudden victory. Later, Joe does roll calls, all the soldiers reply to his calls until Casey doesn't respond. Joe goes to his position to see Casey's dead body, with bloodied holes from the fight. Right after that, two Nazis approach them raising a white flag. Joe meets them out in the sandy field for negotiation. The Nazis ask them to surrender their guns, in exchange for food and water, but Joe declines with a laugh. Instead, Joe takes control of the bargain, asking for the Nazis' guns in exchange for water. The German soldier who's negotiating finds difficulty in replying. They end up separating back into their groups. Suddenly, a Nazi hiding within the corpses starts shooting at Joe. He quickly runs to the ruins for cover, and moves near William behind a rock wall. William tells Joe about his change of heart towards Lulu Bell. He humbly praises the tank, making Joe smile, 
until William gets shot in the head with his body dropping instantly. Joe becomes speechless as he holds onto William. In the distance, the Nazis prepare their guns and rocket launchers, with more numbers this time. Even so, the small group within Bir Arkoma stands their ground. When the Nazis kickstart the battle, Joe's men move to better positions for better cover, but it ends with Jimmy getting shot in front of Joe. Lulu Bell once again, enters the battlefield as the Nazis invade. Meanwhile, Hans tries to escape, and Giuseppe tries to stop him, but fails. Hans successfully runs away from the ruins. Giuseppe comes out to tell Joe, but gets caught in the crossfire dropping dead in seconds. Tambul sees Hans and runs after him. They roll down on the sandy hills, and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Tambul quickly gains dominance, and presses Hans face into the sand, suffocating him in seconds. After Hans dies, Tambul runs back to the ruins. He gets caught in the middle of the field where the Nazis can see him. They shoot him multiple times, but Joe yells for him to keep running, and so he does, until he gets caught in an explosion. He falls dead in front of his comrades but raises something, the silver cross of the Nazi soldier. Joe and his men salute him for a moment, and praise him for his bravery. Joe's men win again as the battle progresses, forcing the Nazis to retreat. The general of the Nazis, along with another soldier, goes back to the ruins to negotiate. Instead of calling Joe, LaRue decides to go and negotiate on his own. The general tells him that the Nazis will not make further attempts to take the well, if they give them water. However, LaRue reiterates what Joe said before, that they will give water in exchange for firearms. They have a tense conversation about the brutality of the Nazis. Then, without warning, LaRue plunges a knife into the general's stomach while shooting the other soldier. Right after that, a hidden Nazi shoots LaRue. Joe and his men, see LaRue fall with a smile, knowing he got the chance to say what he has always wanted to say to the Nazis. Waco dies in one of their last fights against the Nazis' battalion due to an explosion. Joe and Halliday bring him inside the building ruins. Joe gets emotional, and angry as he watches Waco cry in pain. Knowing that the battle is still ongoing, Halliday orders Joe to go back out while he stays with Waco. When Joe returns to the battlefield, a rocket launcher suddenly hits the top of the building, making the ceiling collapse. Joe quickly rushes back in to see Halliday and Waco covered in broken rock and rubble. He cries in agony, as he watches the lifeless faces of his fellow brothers. With Joe and Bates left with nothing but themselves and a few guns, they decide to give it their all in a suicide mission. Joe climbs on top of Lulu Bell with a rifle in hand, as hundreds of Nazis come pouring into the field. He and Bates are about to shoot, until they notice the Nazis handing over their guns, begging for water. Suddenly, the well miraculously starts to gurgle up water, drawing the German soldiers to it. Joe and Bates take this opportunity to take their firearms. When all soldiers have had their fill of water, Bates asks Joe what they will do with them. Then, they start to hear vehicles in the distance approaching them. Some Nazis start standing up, but sit back down when Joe threatens them with a gun. When the vehicles draw close, Joe and Bates celebrate with joy to see that it is their men. Joe and Bates stand in salutation in front of the graves of their fellow soldiers. Then, they climb into Lulu Bell. The movie ends with the tank driving away, while Joe promises to remember the lives of his fallen comrades. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos like this, and help the channel grow.